Okay. Oh, it is on the screen. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to, the, uh, to them or to the kingdom. And they continued to state firstly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in uh, fellowship. In the, break, uh, in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done uh, through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and at all things in common. And sought their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone at need. Next. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and a breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord had to the church daily though being saved. Now, my theme is unity for a purpose. Unity for a purpose. And always, as you know me, I, I minister into the four levels. Number one, myself, yourself, the individual. That's number one. Number two, family. So, whatever we will be going through is, number one, yourself, myself. Number two, your family, your spouse and children. If you are a, a single person, begin looking it in the spiritual realm and begin putting those foundations for your family. And number three is the church, the, the assembly, the local assembly where we are seated right now. And number four is the marketplace, which carries the nation and the nations. Are we together? Now, unity for a purpose. Unit, of course, is being in harmony and in agreement with somebody else or with uh, an organization or a family. Being in harmony. Being in agreement. In whatever you are doing or the move you are taking, you are in harmony with one another. After that, looking at the word of God in the scriptures we have read, if we can begin from 41, you find there is a description God is giving, uh, trying to bring the power and the production that you can find out from unity. And it goes so clearly that those who received the Lord they were glad and they were baptized. And that actually the scriptures is talking about you and I. Because when we received the Lord, if you can remember the day, the week, the month you received the Lord, things were so beautiful to your life. You know, there were not, uh, not many challenges like today and all that. And you can remember the day you went into water and you were baptized in that water. You came out. Some of you, you were filled with the Holy Spirit, I can remember. And some of you, you could not get out your, uh, yourself from the baptism pool, I remember, if you can remember. And it was such an experience, such an encounter with the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so, the number God added up. What is happening these days? We are not baptizing people. And we are not seeing the baptism. I will show you the reason. And this is across the world. But the Lord is doing it again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Remember the way we used to baptize people. I remember a time, a season, we baptized more than 200 people. All right. First, 42. I'm just laying foundation of this. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and uh, fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayer. Four pillars of unity. Either in a 
in the, in the church or in a family or you and the God. You see, you can have a unity with God. If you want to see things move, if you want to see things move in your life, in the marriage, in the family, in the church, here lies the thing. So, here are pillars for unity. And the pillar number one is the right doctrine. That is called the apostles' doctrine. What was the apostles' doctrine? Can I have the creed? Is it coming? Let me show you. That's why I'm calling it a series because we will be doing slowly by slowly because I want you to understand. And after that, you can ask any question you want because what I'm doing, I'm not preaching, I'm teaching you that you may teach somebody else with clarity and understanding. It's not coming? Okay, there we go. Is it up to there? Oh, okay. This is Apostles' Creed. Apostles' Creed, it is called faith of the church. Faith of a strong believer. Faith, if you understand this, you will not be cheated by preachers who are cheating people. You will not be cheated by preachers who you will not be poured water. It will not work if you understand this. So the Apostles' Creed, it is scriptures brought together to make a creed for understanding who you are in Christ. So let's begin together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Who is this Almighty? Let's divine him. And continue. Who is he? Creator of heaven and the earth. Now, this is the God we believe in. He is almighty. He is the final. He is the, the end of the story. If you believe in him, he is the end of everything. Okay. Let's continue. I believe in Jesus Christ. His only son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. All right? He descended where? Yeah. To hell. The third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God. The Father Almighty. From there, He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Wow. If actually every believer will understand that. And understanding this is you go bit by bit. You read it slowly. Prayerfully. Until it gets to your bone marrows. It gets to your brains. It gets to the skin. It gets to everywhere. That what do you believe? Because why people are being tossed here and there is because they are not grounded in the world. Are we together? Why people are running from church to church? Why people are running from miracle, I mean seeking for miracle, miracle, miracles which are not there even? Because the people who, who sell this stuff, they don't have miracles. Miracles are done in the name of Jesus Christ, not in any other object. No object that carries a miracle. 
It is only and only in the name of Jesus Christ. So, if you believe in this stuff, in fact, you shall be a believer whom even demon cannot tell you anything. No demon, because you believe in Jesus Christ who died, buried, and they went where? To hell. So there will be no room of the enemy's lies to tell you, you know, there is power. You know, I can do this to you. No, 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 no. My Lord, my Savior went down to hell. And they did what? He took the key. Amen? He went down and he took the key. Revelation 1, 8. Sorry, I had not written that one. Are you finding it? Oh, I, I find it with myself here. Okay, Revelation 1, 8. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The beginning of every story is Jesus. The beginning of every organization is Jesus. All things are in him. That thing is outside Christ Jesus. Nothing. Nothing. In fact, if believers know this, nothing will shake you. Hell can boil, storms can rise, and dust can touch even the sky. But wait a moment. When the dust settles, Christ remains the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. When dust of even your life, your family, your marriage, when that dust, because there is no dust that remains up there. There is no dust that remains up in the sky. It will blow, it will blow until you can't see. And sometimes even you can be stand still. That's why sometimes you find you are not uh, um, uh, proceeding or you are not having any profit in whatever you are doing. You are in a dust and this dust must go to sky, but it must settle also. And then he says, says the Lord who is and the, who was and the, who is to come. Final. Who was, who is, and who is to come? The Almighty. The Almighty. The final one. The Almighty means your final one. Amen. Verse 18. And there comes. I am he who lives, and I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. Say amen with me. Amen. And I have what? The keys of hate and of death. Amazing. Amazing. When he went to hell, he took the keys. Satan has no keys. I told you the other day, he operates in lies. The enemy operates in lies. So pillar number one of unity is the right doctrine. If you can understand the apostles creed, the apostles doctrine, Jesus, the pillar of life, nothing will shake you. Things will come and go. Fire will be, will never consume you. Waters will come, you will not be drowned. Enemies will come and rise with swords and whatever, they will leave you in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Pillar number two is fellowship. Fellowship like the one we have. What makes a believer to stand in Christ, to be in, in unity with the Christ? It is the fellowship. The fellowship. The keeping together with the brethren. Why? Because always the people you keep with them you will get to be with them if they are stronger than you, if they are many. Even Jesus himself, when he went to the multitude, he asked, who has touched me? And he said, I felt power living. If Jesus would experience power living, how much us? And that's why it is so much repeatedly that do not forsake of getting together with other believers. Because when you are with other believers, the fire burns more. 
But when we are in the marketplace, either you like it or not, the fire, the fire will go down. Either you like it or not. Because when you are sharing with the people, they are draining you. And we are in the marketplace. We cannot run away and say, God, give us a marketplace where there are all people who are born again. No, we must mix with them. We must mix with them. We must actually sell. And sometimes when we are selling, you are telling him, oh, you know, this thing, I bought this and I must get this. As I get to get this, I will get this. As I get to get this, I will get this. And that's why we are being repeatedly told, do not forsake coming together. Because when we come together, tunatiana ngufu, tunatiana moto, na ule moto naendelea tena kufanya kasi. Bwana Yesu asifuwe sana. Si usalimia liya kalibu na we muambie usichelewe tena. Yeah, na uambie mwingine usichelewe tena. Lasima tutiane moyo. Lasima tutiane moto hii. Amina. Because where I am with them, when we are talking, we are, we are greeting one another. The power is going. Eh? The power is going. Remember, there is a time Jesus, when he was sending his uh, uh, disciples, he told them, do not greet anybody on the way. I have given you power to trend on serpents and scorpions. Power. Was leaving. Power was leaving. And that's why we come together again to put the fire up again. Because none of us can retain it. When you greet somebody like this. Do you know what it means? Greeting. It means what? Greeting like this. We are in fellowship in whatever he has. We are in Yes. Greeting means that. That's why the Bible. Sikuambi yukatae. Tunawasalimia alam tukukuja bila. Tuna wasalimia alamu tukukuja tunatiana ngufu. Kuna doktri ni wakuna watu wasalimia nangi. But, tuna wasalimia, lakini tukukuja tunatiana nini? Gufu na moto na mbante na again. Because, tukisalimia na hivi. Mmesalimia na. Unana hiyo mikono vile mengena? That's a fellowship. I agree with you, you agree with me. Ata wakati ya nini ilikuwa nzuri COVID. Hiyo likuwa sawa. Wena shosana. That's why the Bible says giving them the hand of what? Fellowship. Amen. So, in Hebrews number 10, 25, it's there. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. For what purpose? That we may come and put the fire again. Kwa sababu, Ukitembea kule, ukakutana na mlevi yuko. Akaanza kukuandimaya. Ana kutubia mapewa ya usherati. Na we ujui. Ya na hakuja na na kugonga. We ujui. Unasikia tuju wa wiki. Eh? Unatoka tauni, unavika nyumbani, unasikia. You are very weak. Why? Ni mkufu sile umepambana naso. Umepambana na mkufu ya kila namna. So, you have been told... Let's not forsake. Kwanza wao walikuwa wanaenda wanapambana wanapambana jioni wanakutana. They met daily. Eh? Ili akienda kesho aende na nguvu lakini sisi tunakutana anga Wednesdays. Siku hizi zingine kuna pambanwa. Eh ukiuliza mtu uliomba eh simple thing ulisoma ile maandiko bishop alituma niliandika amen. <laughs> Eh? Na mimi ni nani? Ninajua nitawatriki ni jua ni nani usoma. Na, na nasema, hebu niandikie yule mstari umekumbariki. Ume, ume we wapi? Wengine hata hawakuona hiyo. Anasema amen. Ha? <laughs> <laughs> eh? Wengine hawakuona. Nawaambia niandikie ile mstari umekumbariki katika hii text. Amen. Amen. Anasema kweli tuko kwa safari. Is is in safari. Even you listen earlier, Karibu na we. Oh, le ndeka amen ya mo le ndeka mustadi. Oh my God, my God, my God! Hallelujah! Unity for a purpose. You are saying I need the unity 
with the Holy Spirit. I need to walk with the Holy Spirit. Here are the guidelines. I, you are saying, I want unity with my family, with my wife or husband. I need unity with my colleagues. I need unity. Here are the guidelines to have it. Because when you work it fast with God, it will be very easy with the other person. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll be showing you as we continue. Uh, can you get it back to Hebrews 10, 25? Yes. Um, ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, uh, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. The day is still approaching. Yeah? You see what is happening in Israel? The day is still what? Approaching. Because... What is happening in Israel is prophetic uh, season, just the clock ticking. The clock is ticking. The clock is ticking. And by the way, those who read, they know where we are. You see? And the guys around Israel, they know they can do nothing to Israel. Because God, whom they trust, does not slumber, neither sleep. And he must perform his word. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. And so as we see the day approaching, let's not keep away from one another. Let's keep together. Let's keep together. Let's encourage one another. Let's call one another. Let's sing to one another melodies of joy and hope in Christ Jesus. We are pillar number pillar number three. The Bible says and they, 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 they broke bread together. They ate together. The togetherness, the sharing of togetherness. Um, this Today we cannot move house to house eating. That cannot apply. But it will apply helping one another. Helping one another. Is there anyone who has no food, who was this, this is lacking? Yes, we get to understand. And that's why we have hand of departments. We have people down there. If there's anybody lacking, if there's somebody with this, we share together. We be like we are together. Praise the name of the Lord. Why should we not share? I'll be showing you down the enemies of unity. Now, for example, let me ask you. People who had so much money with those rubbles that you have been seeing. And so fussy uh, uh, fashions and all that. Well, yet another. As well as yet. That's a simple life. And that's why we need to have one. That's a simple of life. Nobody. After to be full of Gerion Ama Mangari, they give you an abonga bonga. Says of Menio, and the end of the year, Kumina Moja. That is life. Brethren, if you must become somebody in the kingdom, you need to understand. We need to share. We need to help each other. We need to help each other. So that is pillar number. Number three. Number four. They prayed together. They had seasons of prayer. Meeting to pray. But more people today, they will have no time to meet to pray. They are working throughout. Working to save what people have saved and left. Do you know, when you calculate these things, you'll be amazed. You miss time of fellowship, you miss time of prayer, you miss, you miss sharing with somebody because you are so busy for, the, uh, for um, life and all that. And what is happening with your life? In a twinkle of an eye, you leave it all. You leave it all. You leave for others to enjoy. In Acts 4, 31.
And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. If you go to many churches today, very few people are filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Why? Because there is no that unity where God works in. There is no that unity where God works in. People, if, if, if God will fill people with the Holy Spirit, what will happen? People will just be proud for themselves. You know, I can do this. You know, I can rebuke the demon and demon will cry and leave. You know, I can do this and this. Let me show you something over here. What is the purpose of unity with God? Why God wants so much unity in his people? Unity, unity everywhere. Number one, God works in unity. God works in unity. In Genesis number one, verse 26, is where we begin with the unity. Genesis 1, 26. It reads, then God said, let us, let us, is that pro? Is there unity there? Is there unity there? Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, let us, let us. Without unity, there is no production. Without unity, there is no harvest. Without unity, there are no results. Husband, wife, we will need unity to come up with something. Children and parents who need unity. Elders and, uh, and, and uh, deacons and uh, leaders and members, we will need unity to come up with something. Without unity, there will be nothing that can come out. A very good example is that God did not say, I'm making. He said, let's have with his office. Genesis 11, 1. Uh, this is a long one through six. Let's go through it quickly. Um, time is over. Nobody is telling me. Now the whole earth at one language and one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from uh, the east that they found a plain in the land of Shina. And they dwelt there. Then they said to one another, come, let us, pro, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They ate brick uh, for stone and they ate a uh, shepherd uh, for mortar. And they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top is in the heavens. My God, let us look Every fast, there's unity. In every fast, there's unity. And let's see the results. Let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord uh, came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, indeed, the people are one. The people are one, and they all have one language. And this, what they begin to do because of unity, what they begin to do because they are one, what they begin to pray about because they are one. Wow. And this, what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they purpose, they propose, sorry, they propose to do will be withheld from them. God speaking. God speaking. And when we are together, whatever we propose to do, if God will not intervene, nothing will stop. 
Nothing will stop. Any family, any marriage, any church, any organization, any nation, if it gets together to one language and it becomes one thing, whatever they propose to do, nothing can stop it. And that's why the devil fights unity every moment, 24 hours, 7. In everywhere, in everywhere, he will fight unity. Because he knows if a couple is together, they will exhale. If a church leadership and the people they are together, they will exhale. The enemy knows if a, if a young lady and a young man who are in courtship, they will be in unity, this thing will exhale. And if it excels, it will bring blood to the kingdom of darkness. So he will interfere with everything. He can interfere with everything. He can interfere. And sometimes you wonder, why do I hate so and so? And there's nothing. There's no reason. Huh? You belong to the same church. You are not um, uh, sharing anything that you are saying is getting much than me. Why? The devil knows when we are together like this, when we are saying yes, and the yes is coming from within our hearts, nothing will stop us. Nothing will stop us. We will make it. So God said, whatever they propose to do, it will not be held from them. What a strong statement from God. That when we are together, nothing can stop this. Nothing. So we are saying unity gives us unthinkable results. Unity will give us unthinkable results. Number three, unity gives stable marriages and families, organizations, and nations. That's number three. Number three or number two. Which number do you want? Yeah? Number two. Number two, unity gives us unthinkable results. Number three, which we are getting from Matthew 12, 25. It gives us, unity gives us stable marriages, stable families, stable churches, stable organizations, stable nations, whereby they have results because of the unity. And they have success, they excel, and they have excellency because of unity. Let me tell you, unity in our family keeps the family from sicknesses and diseases. Unity in a marriage keeps the couple stronger every day than yesterday. In Jesus' name. But Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to dissolution. And every city or house divided against itself will not stand. And that is the purpose of Satan. And always I pray, I pray always when you see things are not working, check the unity. When things are not working in the church, check the unity. When things are not working in your marriage, in your family, check the unity. Because none of you is bad. Satan is trying to break the unity that things may not work. None of you is bad. And you know the one who used to call each other darling and dead? Uh, yes. And you could not finish Coca-Cola bottle. They are three, 300 milliliters. You could not finish. And I have to say, 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 I have Anaweza kukuletea watu kutoka inje watakuja kuwa ni kama they are the main discussion of your marriage. And nobody can help your family. It's only you two. Keep the unity and see what God is going to do. Keep the unity and see what God is going to do. Can we hold it from there? See this one, then we will continue with number four. 
number four or five. And then we will see the enemies of unity. And then we will see where we can hold it and where we can, we can say no and bring unity. It's our foundation in our own lives, in our marriages, in the church, in the family, in the church, and in the marketplace. So many organizations start very well. <laughs> and uh, an example, because you know, is breakthrough. Uh, it began very well, very powerful. But because of the enemy, the enemy. Because Satan and you are, he can't get the layer. He, he can't get the layer. So, take care of your family, take care of your marriage, take care of your business, take care of your work. Amen. Why do people come to tell you about other people? If you can be very wise. Mutu anakuambia kuhusu mwingine because anataka kumbreak the unity. Maana I can break your unity na labda yeye ajui anakuwa tu slave of the enemy. I can break the unity then if that was a, your client. Unajua umemiss. Si alikuwa client wako? Umemiss. Na hata akiwa kwa client alikuwa brother in the church. Umemiss. Because we need each other. To succeed, you need each other. Let's all be standing.